Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I am Reema Tendulkar. With me is Sonal Bhutra, and these are the top stories. Stocks continue to trade ranged in a holiday week with few big queues to provide direction. Utilities consumer discretionary lead the gains while IT drags. Mid caps fare a tad better than the large caps. RBN hits 5% upper circuit on an order win worth over 1500 crore rupees in Maldives. Page Industries gains on a rating upgrade from MK Global. The brokerage now has a buy call on the stock and sees a potential upside of 16%. Haryom Pipe sets a record high after inking a deal to buy operating asset from a metal player for 56 crore rupees. The stock has zoomed since listing in April. Alright, uh, those are the top headlines that we are tracking on Midcap Radar today. So the headlines that we just spoke about, but apart from that, markets extremely range bound. Again, they have fallen from the top. So after a 30 point gain right now. Nifty is absolutely flat with some negative bias. The mid-cap side of things also, which have been outperforming and is still outperforming, that index has come off from the highs of the day as well. PSU banking names, those are the ones which are uh, continuing to do well. So PSU banking index is up one percent, though it has come off from the highs. At the start, it was up around two percent, so now it's seeing gains of around one percent. Um, the monthly options expire tomorrow, so that's something that could uh, define market moves, but not many cues, so to say. No, not at all, right? <laughs> Tomorrow, uh, December expiry, and then over the weekend we'll get the auto sales <coughs> numbers. Um, so that's something the street will be tracking. But you can see so much momentum in individual names and sectors, right? And fertilizer that's been on fire. Even today, something like FACT is up eight and a half percent. RCF, NFL, and pull up the intraday chart, you would see gains coming through in the last thirty minutes as these stocks have gained anywhere between fifteen to thirty percent so far this month. So that's clearly a pocket where you are seeing a lot of momentum. Hotel stocks, I guess it's the year end. I guess there is a sentiment uptick, but hotel stocks like EIH, Lemon Tree, Chalet Hotels as well are not Indian hotels. EIH, Lemon Tree, Chalet Hotels. These are seeing some good gains today, up close to about four odd percent. Uh, we'll be getting to Vivek in just a bit to talk about more bid caps. But in the meanwhile, let me invite Samit Chauhan, the technical analyst of Angel One, for a technical check on the markets. Samit, does it make sense to take a call on the Nifty right now because the year-end phenomena is playing out? Uh, things are, you know, on the lighter side in terms of volumes. Uh, what's the direction that you expect the Nifty to take? Good afternoon. See, uh, market, uh, you know, seems to be in a consolidation mode after you know two days of uh, sharp recovery from the lower levels. Now, uh, with uh, you know last two days of price movement, it appears that 17, 700, 17, 800 has become a sacrosanct support zone. And till the time we remains, uh, you know. Uh, about this, uh, uh, there is no real reason to worry for. Uh, but uh, on the higher side, the momentum is clearly lacking in key indices. So as far as Nifty is concerned, 17, 200, 300 seems to be a strong. 18, 300 uh, seems to be a strong resistance for this expiry itself. So as of now, there are no uh, indications whether we'll surpass 18, 300 uh, by tomorrow itself. Overall, we believe that the trend is likely to be on the higher side. But for next couple of days, we are likely to see consolidation. The consolidation could be in the range of 250, 300 point for Nifty, and for Bank Nifty, it would be around 500 to 700 point. Uh, so, range-bound activity is likely to continue within the indices. But yes, as, as you just pointed out, the, the stock-specific traction is quite good, and hence it's you know better to focus on individual stocks that are clearly providing better trading opportunities. So, what would your individual technical bets be in that case, Samit? Uh, see, most of the beaten down counters are now, you know, giving some sort of recovery. If you look at the Tata Chemicals, the stock has already corrected more than you know 25 percent in last uh, couple of months. Stock has managed to find support around its you know uh, uh, key moving averages on weekly and monthly time frame chart. So 870, 880 seems to be very strong support, and stock has already rebounded from those levels. But uh, the kind of price action that uh, we are witnessing today, stock has already pierced its Friday moving average, which is the you know early sign of uh, revival. So at least uh, with a short-term perspective, we expect this trading bounce to continue. 955, 960 these are the next levels to watch out for as far as Tata Chemicals is concerned. And as a trader, one can keep a stop somewhere around 918. Uh, the second buy would be you know from the two-wheeler space, TVS Motors, you know which has been one of the rank outperformers within this space. Stock didn't uh, you know participate in this recent correction. In fact, uh, you know went through a long consolidation phase. And since uh, you know, in last uh, couple of days, we are seeing good traction. Stock is on the verge of a breakout, 
and is likely to come out of its recent congestion phase. So if you look at the volume activity, it has picked up substantially, and hence we expect uh, the stock to move beyond 1100. 1120 as a momentum trader, one can clearly eye on. And uh, you know, as a uh, as a stop loss level, one can now put a stop loss somewhere around 1060. Okay, thank you very much for that. Let's get to our segment, mid cap movers. Vivek is here to take us through the mid caps that are moving around. Vivek. Well, uh, good afternoon. After you know a brief lull uh, last week, where none of the stocks we actually saw uh, hit the 52-week highs. Today, again, we are getting a few stocks that have uh, you know managed to hit their 52-week highs. Uh, JSPL, after the very sharp 9% up move to, uh, yesterday, uh, today the stock opened in the green, managing to hold on to the gains, but at a fresh 52-week high today. Fact, like you mentioned, you know this particular stock has been doing very well in the week gone by. Almost every day, it's notched up double-digit gains this particular week. Uh, moving on, you know, some of the stocks that are moving up on very strong volumes. Arvind Smart Spaces, and the stock we don't talk about too much, uh, but again, Chamanlal Setia Export is doing very well today. Ircon, as well as MTNL, today moving up on strong volumes. Uh, some of the other stocks that we're looking at, Skipper, you know, this particular stock continues to move higher, you know, recently cooled off a little bit from the 52-week high level that it was trading at, but again, it's managed to scale back. Uh, specialty restaurants as well as Zuari Agro today moving up on strong volumes. On the other hand, some of the stocks today that are seeing a bit of profit booking, Aegis Logistics, Data Patterns, as well as Map Mind DLC Info are the stocks that are seeing a bit of profit booking. Okay, all right. So that's an interesting list. Vivek, thank you so much for joining us and taking us through which stocks are moving around in the broader markets. Let's do one thing. Let's uh, slip into a break now. Up next, we'll be connecting with Pankaj Pudar, who's the CEO of Cosmo First, to discuss Outlook 2023. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Still tuned into Midcap Radar on CNBC TV 18. And let's move on to an exclusive story. Sources tell CNBC TV 18 that Carbon Resources and McLeod Russell Promoters will jointly settle lenders' dues. Vivek is joining us with those important details. Vivek? Well, that's right. You know, uh, what we understand from our sources is that, you know, the company in focus is McLeod Russell. Even earlier, we had indicated about how, you know, the company as well as Carbon Resources uh, were independently trying to actually go ahead and settle dues with the lenders. But what we understand now, and this is uh, something that we are picking up of from our sources, and this is a fresh development, we understand that now Carbon Resources and McLeod Russell Promoters are now jointly, uh, you know, planning to offer an OTS or a one-time settlement to the lenders. Both Carbon Resources and the promoters are willing to give the lenders close to 1,100 crores as a one-time settlement. Now, this particular um, settlement actually will indicate that for, of the secured loans given to the lenders, there will be a 100% uh, recovery as far as the principal amount is concerned and a 60% recovery as far as the unsecured lenders are concerned. Now, we understand that, you know, the board meeting will be held soon and the proposal is likely to be submitted soon. So, where, you know, from where will uh, both Carbon Resources as well as, uh, you know, McLeod Russell actually manage to garner the funds? What we understand is that uh, there will initially be a select asset monetization that will be done to Carbon Resources, uh, mainly sale of some domestic tea assets and uh, you know, that is how the infusion will come in. The other op option that uh, the company has is that there will be an equity infusion by carbon as well as the promoters of McLeod Russell, that is mainly the Khaitan family. And lastly, you know, there could be a sale of non-core assets. Remember, McLeod Russell's uh, one example of a non-core asset is the fact that McLeod Russell owns close to 2.29% stake in Everready Industries. Um, post uh, the lender approval, you know, the main focus would be to revive the industry and carbon resources will have a major say as they would intend to have a board seat. Now remember, look, some of the lenders and this would be quite beneficial to the entire lending community given the fact that a uh, lot of lenders have exposure to McLeod Russell. Uh, so ICICI Bank, Axel Bank, LBI, PNB, HDFC Bank, Indian Bank, all of them are the secure lendings. Unsecured lenders include uh, Yes Bank and RBL Bank. This is in continuation of our story uh, in September where we had mentioned that Carbon Resources was looking at taking over McLeod Russell. Thank you very much uh, for that, uh, Vivek. Uh, let's move on and address another important um, company that we've lined up for you on uh, MCR. Uh, packaging industry in focus today. We have Pankaj Poda, the CEO of Cosmo First, now joining in. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining in. Uh, first, if you could give us an indication of how the BOPET spreads and pricing has been this year, because we first saw a sharp decline in crude prices and then that bit of a recovery. Hi, good afternoon. So, uh, see, there has been a bunch in um, capacity. Mr. Podar, I think you're on mute. I okay. am not. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Please go ahead. Please go yes, ahead. please go ahead. Okay. All right. 
So I was saying, uh, you know, there was punching of capacity in the current year, and therefore at large, the commodity margins are down in polyester. Uh, having said that, you know, the company has uh, decided, or let's say our chairman, Mr. Jaipuri, and I uh, earlier had decided that we will decommoditize the company, focus on specialty films, and we have been uh, able to do this successfully over the years, and that should... Uh, you know, be clearly coming out in uh, results. It came out in the past too, and it will continue to come, and those efforts will continue from our side. Oh yes, uh, that's uh, that's true, Pankaj. But uh, good afternoon. The thing is that we have seen and we have been talking about how much supply is going to hit the industry soon. We are talking about global supply addition here as well. In that case as well, is it easy to insulate pricing or spreads on specialty films as well? What is the general margin difference? How much more are you earning or able to make on specialty films uh, in terms of numbers? Yeah, so on an average, we earn close to 35 rupees per kg higher. Uh, let's understand that majority of these specialty films are linked to raw material pricing. There's a lot of research which goes on for uh, several years. And every product category that you develop will, it takes its own course of time. Most of these cases, you have very limited competition globally. Uh, you know, in some cases, it is just one or two companies. In some cases, we are the only one who is supplying it. Few cases, there could be three, four suppliers. So the competition is far lesser. And, we're, and we therefore do not see a reason that in the short term, uh, there will be a depletion of margins. Obviously, over a period of time, some products, uh, you know, become semi-speciality and later on, uh, does get into commodity, uh, but we have a strong pipeline of products. And the other thing that we have done, if we see the last 20 year history of Cosmo, you know, we used to have thermal films as the first major launch from Cosmo. Then we got label films as the next major launch uh, from Cosmo where we did very well. And then there was a synthetic paper. The good news is that now we have a, a host of products that, uh, you know, are either getting commercialized or in the process of getting commercialization. And therefore, uh, we'll continue to work on uh, speciality growth, and that's the critical focus when it comes to a film business. Hmm. Uh, could you give us an indication of whether textile demand has started moderating? A lot of the industry people that we speak to, channel checks, seem to indicate that there is a demand moderation from the textile space. Uh, do you have uh, specialized chemicals which cater to the textile space, and how is demand over there? Yeah, so one of the new verticals that we started under Cosmo Speciality Chemicals was textile chemical. And you rightly pointed out that the demand, especially in the export side, has uh, moderated a bit. And therefore, uh, scaling up that business to that extent has been a challenge. But there again, our focus is largely getting to niche products. And uh, obviously, uh, niche products take its own time to scale up. Uh, but from a demand perspective, you are right, uh, textile demand in general is lower. And as per the recent reports, again, uh, year 2023 is also expected to remain lower when it comes to textile overall demand. But having said that, the government has also come up with PLI, which I think will start showing results from uh, mid of 23 or early 24, uh, because close to, if I remember correctly, close to 15,000 crore rupees of uh, PLI has been uh, approved for textile, and that is going to bump up the demand for textile in the coming years. Okay, so that is about textile as a part of your specialty chemicals. Which are the other industries you cater to? You already also have spoken about a 60 crore, 60 crore capex in the specialty chemicals business. Uh, what is the asset turn here? Say two, three years down the li line, how much will specialty chemicals contribute to your overall revenues? So see, Cosmo Specialty Chemicals is one division that we started uh, barely one and a half uh, years ago. Uh, this year, we expect to close uh, anywhere between 180 to 200 crores. Uh, and, uh, you know, we initially started with speciality master batches, then got into textile chemicals. And we are, uh, you know, under product trials right now for adhesives. So there'll be largely these three verticals for us. And, uh, the, you know, right now, uh, till now, we have invested uh, close to 35, 40 crores under this vertical. Uh, we will be scaling it up, especially the adhesive verticals in the times to come. And the asset turnover ratio will always uh, be much better on a chemical business because even if you see on 35 crores, we've already reached uh, 200. We have a potential to touch 300, 350 crores from this capex uh, itself. So the asset turnover ratio will be anywhere between 8 to 10 for this business. Okay. Mm. Sir, it's the year and it's time to look ahead. And, uh, you know, we would love it if you could give us some projections, some growth plans for the company. FI22 revenues were nearly 3,000 crore rupees. What could the number look like in, you know, in the next year? Um, FI23, FI24, give us the growth plans. When do you think revenues could double, for instance? What are the internal projections? 
Yeah. So see, one thing, uh, another business that we didn't talk about is Zigly, where uh, we have recently launched the app. So our app is now working on both iOS and the Android is the first pet care app in the country. Uh, since we last spoke, um, now we've opened a lot of new stores as well. So we are a true omni-channel pet care company now. And uh, we are close to 11 stores and we uh, open uh, two to three stores every month. As far as the overall revenue is concerned, uh, we had earlier given a projection that by FY26, uh, we are uh, looking at uh, you know somewhere between 5,500 to 6,000 crore revenue. Uh, we are uh, you know steering uh, nicely on that. We have already announced expansions in film business as well as uh, chemical and Ziggly. Uh, so all of them are growing as per plan. And uh, so from current uh, last year, 3,300 crores, we should be doing 6,000 crores by FY26. So you'll be doubling your revenues by FY26. Actually, I wanted to speak to you about your pet care business as well. Uh, you have been talking about expanding in the retail and the online presence as well. Uh, what is the current number of stores right now? How much can you expand it to? So what kind of additional investment will it require here? And when you talk about your online channel and apps, how many downloads have you seen here? What kind of visitor growth have you seen on your website as well? Yeah, so right now we have not spent any money in terms of the download and already 16,000 downloads have happened and close to 1.5 lakh customers are already uh, following our different social media. So it's a very good response we are getting from the customers. Month on month, we are seeing 20-25% uh, growth in terms of our sale numbers. As for stores, we've already opened 11 stores. By March, we're expecting to be somewhere in the range of uh, 15 to 18 stores. We had earlier talked about 15 stores, but looks like we should be exceeding that number. Uh, app has just got launched and uh, you know we are seeing a fabulous response too because customers for the first time are seeing a pet care app where they can uh, order the products uh, very comfortably, but at the same time, in some cities, we've also gone ahead and given the services to the customers. Some of these services are also available on telephone, like training and uh, vet services. So uh, we are getting a phenomenal response. We continue to uh, you know, open new warehouses also to make sure that our deliveries are faster. Right now, we have warehouse only in Delhi NCR region. We are soon going to also launch it in Mumbai and then later on in South India. So, which will make sure that we are able to deliver to most of our customers within a day or in some cases in few hours, uh, uh, which is uh, further going to scale up our digital side of the business. Okay, all right, Mr. Pudar, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us and outlining plans in different segments as well. And wishing you and everyone at Cosmo First a very happy new year as well. Uh, that's the word coming in from Cosmo First. The stock is up around 1.5%. Some recovery seen in the Nifty as well. That is up 26 points as we speak. Bank Nifty too has recovered and that one is up around 108 points. So there has been uh, a massive move actually. The Nifty is at the day's high right now and it is led by Bank Nifty. So that one too has seen some recovery from the lows. Slip into a break now. On the other side, in our special segment Midcap Spotlight, we'll focus on Hari Home Pipe Industries. It's up around 15%. Stay tuned. Welcome back. CE Info or Map My India. The stock has hit a fresh 52 week low today. It's down close to about 3.5%. Uh, the stock is currently at 1060 while it's holding above its issue price because this is one of the more recent listings. The issue price was 1032. The stock is down 45% from its 52 week high. And this year itself, it's down 36%. And it's a fresh 52 week low coming in on Map My India. But let's get to the mid-cap spotlight then of the day. That's Hari Om Pipe Industries. The stock has hit a record high after an asset purchase deal and has seen solid gains over the last six months. Surbi is here to tell us more on that. Hi, Surbi. Hi, thanks for that. So, Hari Om Pipes is surging in trade today. In fact, since the time the company was listed on exchanges in April, it has been gaining traction. It was listed in April at a 44% premium to its issue price and in the last six months, the stock has nearly doubled. Today, the company is in focus as they have entered into an asset transfer agreement with RP Metals where they will buy companies operating assets for 55 crores. The assets that they have acquired manufacture galvanized pipes and cold roll coil. The plant is spread across 14 acres of land in Tamil Nadu. Apart from this, a week ago, that they have commissioned 15-ton electric met melting furnace, which will increase their billet productions from 96,000 metric tons per annum to 104,000 metric tons per annum. The company is a Hyderabad-based backward integrated steel pipe company. They manufacture sponge iron, billets, HR strips and pipes. 
almost all of their revenues comes from the southern part of India. For the first half, they've seen a revenue growth of 34%, their EBITDA grew 26%, and their PAD saw a growth of 46%. So, B, thank you so much for that. That stock is up around 10-odd percent. And with that, it's a wrap in this edition of Midcap Radar. Stay tuned. Your stocks when we return.